Hallelujah. How's everybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Y'all look at peace, and joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You know, there's nothing like that corporate worship. Amen. You know, it's, you, you, it's, you, you, you just can't get it yourself sometimes, you know. You, you need others to boost you up. And, you know, and the, the more people that are together, worshiping, man, you're drawing God's presence. And all of a sudden, you just feel something hit your gut. And it's like, whoa. And all of a sudden, you feel giggly and joyful and and all the garbage left, and, and it's like, oh, I'm getting filled now. You know, we don't get filled from top to bottom. We get filled from bottom to top. <laughs> it starts right here. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen? <laughs> oh, praise God. Oh, just, just wonderful. I love it. I love his presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to go somewhere tonight. Don't ask me where yet. There's something going on. How many of y'all know there's something going on? I want to start somewhere. You know, in the garden, Adam and Eve were created in God's, Adam was created in God's image and likeness. Eve was created in the in, image of Adam. So in that we see that they were created equal in God's image and likeness. Amen? So in this image and likeness, there was something that was, they were created with and what they were. They were righteous. Everyone say they were righteous. So it wasn't something to where um, they had to do something to become righteous. They were righteous. They were created out of God's righteousness. In other words, God's righteousness was in them. They were righteous. When they fell, they lost the righteousness of God. No longer were they the righteousness of God. Their obedience was counted as righteousness. Is everybody okay? Does everybody get this? Because in this we see that because when Adam and Eve fell, they were contaminated because they, they participated with the serpent. Amen? And, and so something that was participation, whether it was crossbreeding or so, uh, uh, something partaken of that that caused them to fall. Remember, they lost the righteousness of God. Why? Because of their disobedience. Now there had to be a place of their obedience that would express the righteousness of God. It was said unto, Mo, unto Abraham that Abraham's faith, his obedience was considered righteousness. So in, in that, in other words, we don't produce any righteousness. Our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But the righteousness that is manifested through us is the righteousness of Christ through our obedience and cooperation. Has everybody got that? So when there's no cooperation, there's no obedience, there's no righteousness. Does everybody understand? This is so powerful because this is where so many people are foolish. They're deceived, and they don't get this because they are not mature enough, or they don't want to be. They just want to be a granola Christian, or what we call carnal. They really don't get it. Their lives are not, see, to be Christ-like is to live for the kingdom. This is living for, we live for the kingdom. If you're not living for the kingdom, if you're living for yourself, then you're not Christ-like, even though you proclaim to be a Christian. 
Christ-like says, I live for the kingdom. Doesn't Jesus live for the kingdom? Amen. Didn't he die for the kingdom? He died. Does, does everybody understand it? So again, in this arena, you and I have no righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ that is manifested through us due to what? Our obedience. So when there's not obedience, can Christ's righteousness be manifested through us? No. See, because the, the world only knows good and evil. They don't know righteousness. So a carnal believer won't understand righteousness. The only thing they understand is whether they're good or evil. And you, you know, even the Bible, look at you may not be doing the wrong thing, but it may be counted wrong because you're not doing the right thing. Does that make sense? You know, just because you're not doing, just because you're not drinking anymore, you're not partying anymore, and you're not, but if you're still doing your will, you're doing, hello? So you're doing what you want to do. It can't be counted as righteousness. Amen. Amen. This is why we're seeing so many things coming to the surface now. All of these areas. And, and I'm sharing this because down the lineage line, and I'm not going to go down all of this. The, ser- uh, the seed of the serpent continues. The contaminated blood continues. There's interbreeding and there's crossbreeding. So again, we're all, everyone's been contaminated. Amen. <laughs> That's why Jesus had to come and bring pure blood. So in this, there was, I want to talk about two sons of Isaac. Now we see that the blessings come down through the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Anybody else know? Esau. Jacob and Esau. And there's something about this that we're going to just go into and and bring up to the area where we are standing right now. What is going on? Is everybody okay? All right. First turn to Psalm 83. You know, I really wanted to go deep into this arena, but there's not enough time and and. And, and, and the Holy Spirit just quickened me to bring up what's going on right now. So we want to talk about what's going on right now. What's happening right now. In Psalm 83. So I wanted to share about the understanding about the garden. What happened in the garden about righteousness. And about that there is no longer righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Through our what? Obedience. In Psalm 83, in verse 1, would you read it with me? Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against you your people, and consulted together against your, sh- your what? Sheltered ones, those protected. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a what? What's Israel now? There's something that's stirring, that's gathering together to try and cut off Israel because it's become a nation. That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Now understand that Jacob, who wrestled with the angel of the Lord, his name was changed to Israel. And this is where Israel was birthed from. Verse 5. They have consulted together with one consent, and they have formed a what? Confederacy against you. Now, In the word, it talks about ten kings, which represent ten kingdoms. These are confederacies. It says that the tents of what? Adam and the Ishmaelites, Moab and and Hagrites, Gibel, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyra, Assyria, also 
has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Now I want to talk about this confederacy. This confederacy is uh, a gathering of nations that is going to come against Israel. Now, Adam is known as Esau. Esau is Adam. And we're going to go through the rest of these here later because of the Ishmaelites. And so we know Ishmael is the son of Abraham, but the mother was Egyptian. So there was a crossbreed here. Amen? So we got Isaac and Ishmael, don't we? As the two sons. Isaac was the pr promised seed. Ishmael wasn't. We've got Jacob and Esau. So as you go down, we can go all the way back and I'll keep going all the way forward and you'll find it in the area where there begins a split and crossbreed and then, and then interbreed. So we see Adam is Esau, an enemy of Israel. Go to Genesis 25. Explain this a little bit more. 21. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah his wife conceived. But the children struggled together within her and she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Here's a woman that went to inquire of the Lord. And you know what? She heard him. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. Hello? Came out what color? Red. Now we know that there was no lineage of the righteous sod, righteous seed that was red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when he bore them. So the boys grew and Esau was a skillful hunter. He was very skillful at hunting. A man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. Flesh creature. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with the same red stew. For I was, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Adam. And Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. <coughs> and Esau said, look, I'm about to die. So what is this birthright to me? No respect. See, the serpent seed line has no respect for birthright, according to Christ's line, according to the righteous line. Has everybody got that? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Why? Because Esau was the first one out, but Jacob grabbed his heel. I think people would probably pass out if they saw that happen today. Ah! <laughs> At least he didn't say come back in here. We'd have problems. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew and lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau, Esau despised his birthright. In other words, he despised his inheritance. He despised his family lineage of what he thought. Why would he despise it? Personally, I don't think he was born according to that. 
because somehow, somewhere along the line, there was a mixed breed. Remember, in the garden, what happened right then? Their blood, they, they were contaminated, weren't they? Amen. Go to Genesis 27. In verse 39. So Isaac was now blessing them. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live and by your, and you shall serve your brother. Now he's talking to Esau. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So there will be such a hatred between Esau and Israel, the Edomites and the Israelites. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. And the words of Esau, verse 42, her older son were, to told, were told to Rebekah, so she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise and flee, and go to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you, and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be... Bereaved also of you both in one day. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like these are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? Does everybody see that? Look at verse 28, chapter 28, verse 1. This is what she meant. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. And charged men said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of the what? Canaan or the Canaanites. Why? What were the Canaanites? Amen. They were the seeds of the serpent, weren't they? Some of them were hybrids. Arise and go to Padam around, around the house of Bethel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there are the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So we see here that something was happening. He said, look it, I want you to stay in her bread. Does everybody understand it? He said, this is going to be the what? Take yourself a wife there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So this would be his cousins. So there would be interbreeding there to maintain what? A lineage line. Is everybody okay? Okay. Now, um, then it says, and may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful, multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples, give you the blessings of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, and that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. Now let's go to uh, Genesis 36. So there would be a tremendous hatred of Esau in Israel, or Edomites in Israel. In verse 1 in Genesis 36. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Adam. Esau took his wives from the daughters of what? Now wait a minute. He took his wives from the daughter of what? Canaan. Now, didn't the mother say, look at, didn't the father say, don't, don't marry any of them? Hello? So we know that there was crossbreeding here, contaminating. Adad, the daughter of Alan the Hittite. So he married a Hittite too. Alabama, the daughter of Anan, the daughter of Zebian, the Hivite. So we see, look at all of this. 
all of the cross breeding, the bashment, Ishmael's daughter, even Ishmael's daughter he married, sister of Nabajo, now Adan Abar, uh, Elzava to Esau, and Bashmath bore Reu. My goodness. <laughs> How did I remember all their names, you know? <laughs> Couldn't I nickname them? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> That's why we have junior and senior and, <laughs> and <laughs> you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Anyways. And Halabama bore Jesu, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau, who were born to him in the land of what? Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all of his animals, and all his goods, which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together in the land where they were strangers, could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Sirah. Esau is Adam. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Sirah. And I'm not going to get into all that again. So anyways, the Edomites. So the Edomites crossbred with the serpent seed. Amen. So there was an everlasting hatred with them for Israel. Now, when I was, uh, when I was in God's presence today and just all of a sudden it just, whew, he said, the Adamites are Russian. And I went, whoa, the Adamites are Russian? Adam and Hebrew are Russian people today. They are the offspring, the Edomites. Adan in, he in the Hebrew tongue means red. Prophesied in the end times to become a great nation. What is there a red flag in the great nations? Russia. A nation that will live by the sword and die by the sword. Raising its red banner, Russia. Esau is a, was a powerful hunter. Now listen. He was a hunter just like Nimrod. Nimrod wanted to rule the world. What does Russia want to do? Rule the world. But who's behind them? The serpent. Amen? Nimrod wanting to rule the world also. What we're looking at today, we have, first of all, Russia and Iran were enemies for 2,500 years. And to the last... I don't know, six, seven years, eight years, all of a sudden they began to join together. See, the Confederacy. Why? Because they provide them weapons. China is now friends with Russia and Iran. So we're seeing the Confederacy begin to build. And you got to remember that even though Russia doesn't proclaim and speak hatred to Israel, they do. They're like the silent enemy doing things behind closed doors. They make promises that don't fulfill. They're always covenant breakers. Go to Ezekiel 38. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Ezekiel 38 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. The land of Magog, the word here Magog means is Russia. The prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tabul, and prophesy against them. And say, thus says the Lord Gog, behold, I am against you, O Gog. Gog is a prince. He is a king. O God, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tabel. I want you to understand something that in the book of Amos, in chapter 7 and verse 1, I'm not going to go there because our translation is different. But if you go to the Subtuagent, the original translation in Greek, I'm going to tell you what it says. 
It says, to Gog, king of the locusts. Why? Because he is one of Satan's own non-human characters, an angel of Satan. Is everybody okay? You go to the Subtuagent, which is the original translations in Greek. And Amos chapter 7 and verse 1, it says, To Gog, king of the locusts. Why? Because he's not human. This is why the Lord's coming against him. He was either one of the offsprings of the giants or, hello, the Nephilim, which is very well, or one of the angels of, the, of Satan's kingdom. Remember, he calls them principalities. All right, in verse 4. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia. Now, I'm going to... Persia means Iran today. Ethiopia is Ethiopia. Libya is Libya. And with them, all of them with the shield and helmet. Gomer is Germany. And all its troops, the house of Tagarma, from the far north and all its troops. And Tagarma may mean China. I'm not 100% sure. It's either that or dead on, one of them. But you can follow it through. Many people, well, if you think about it from the far north, well, you got, if you keep going far north enough, you're going to hit China. And all its troops... And many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready you and all your companies that are gathered about you and be a guard for them. In other words, a leader or protector for them. What is he talking about? Russia. And after many days you will be visited in the latter what? Years. Are we in the latter years? Amen. You will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people people on the mountains of Israel. In other words, this would be after Israel was restored. People are coming back and it becomes a nation. Which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations and now all with them dwell safely. Does Israel dwell safely right now? Yes, they're protected, aren't they? You will ascend coming like a storm covering the land like a cloud. You and all of your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of the unwalled villages. Israel is unwalled. I will go to the peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. To take what? Plunder, to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are against inha again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Now listen, Israel turned desert land <laughs> into forests of produce and I'm, I've been there. You drive down and you go from one desert to another. And it's pretty amazing to me that they have iced coffee in these places. So you can stop get iced coffee and sandals while you're looking at all. Some places have cattle. Some places have watermelons. There's watermelons on the sand. It's amazing to me. Then there's palm trees and there's bananas and there's all of this. Man, you're just driving and all there's just groves and groves of stuff. And then all of a sudden you come to a desert and then you come to an iced coffee shop. And sandals. <laughs> but this is what they're wanting now. It says in verse 13, Sheba, Dendan, Den, the merchants of Tarshish. Tarshish is Great Britain. 
And all the young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? In verse 14, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses in a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am howled in you, O Gog, before their eyes. In other words, the Lord is going to destroy them. He's going to put a hook in the jaw and pull them back. Something is going to occur. Is everybody with me? So now we see that we are in a time right now that is just pretty wild. Because these Islamic Muslim nations are gathering together. This confederacy is gathering together, preparing to attack Israel. Something is going to occur soon so that some kind of treaty can be manifested. Now, the ten kings, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but there's something that occurred. There was a prophecy. I don't know if you know it or not, but Israel, two days ago, pulled out of every single one of their embassies worldwide. Every one. There is no more Israeli embassy in the world. There's a reason for that. It was prophesied, and I heard the prophecy today from somebody else that's heard of, and it's, there's multiple prophecies, but they're the same prophecy. That when planes begin to disappear, Israel will attack Iran. This is a prophecy. Are planes disappearing? Yes. This prophecy was a while back. And there's multiple people that are coming up with it that have said, yes, the Lord has told me the same thing. In other words, didn't the Bible say that to be signs in the sky? Well, planes disappearing is a sign. You know, they still don't know where that plane is. And now they're not even going to go there because if they find it, it won't really be the real plane. Because it isn't. It's gone. And planes are disappearing. But they're not telling us about all of them that are disappearing. Things that were happening over the Bermuda Triangle, things were disappearing. They couldn't find them. They sent search people. Out. They couldn't find nothing. No traces of anything. But things are happening. And it's very possible. That's why Israel. Now they said that there were, the reason why they closed down their, all of their embassies was because of a labor dispute. A strike. What, are they going to close down the embassies because they're fighting over five bucks or something? No, I don't think so. <laughs> but they didn't get the pension or, or they wanted more health care? They, maybe they wanted Obama over there. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> but again, there's no reason, there, there isn't any logical reason except for something is about to happen. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Gog and Magog. Magog is Russia. Gog is the king, the spiritual, demonic force that's leading this confederacy. He's called the king of locusts. In Daniel chapter 7. It's important that we try to stay updated. what's happening because we are on the cutting edge and Daniel 7 verse 23 now when Daniel speaks about the fourth beast we know that it's associated with two things it's associated with a nation, but it's also associated with a ruler over the nation, which is an angel that's what? Anybody remember? 
that's put on flesh. Is everybody okay? Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth. Why? Because during this period of time, when God is going to, in, in mid-tribulation, they're going to be forced into the natural realm. In fact, didn't the Bible say that Jesus, uh, there was a body prepared for Jesus, right? Well, doesn't Satan duplicate what Jesus does? So we know that there'll be a body prepared for Lucifer. Now, look at the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the dragon will be beasts. <laughs> they'll all be a beast, but they'll call one of them a beast. So in this, we know that a body will be prepared for Satan when he gets thrown into the natural realm. And there'll be... And I'll, these angels will be beginning to put on flesh. Someone will look pretty strange and whatever they turn into. Verse 23, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings. Where there's ten kings, how many, is, how many kingdoms are there? Ten kingdoms. These are the confederacies. The ten horns are ten kings who shall rise from this kingdom and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. See, we're going to see right now, look at during, in, in Genesis it talks about the Nephilims. The Nephilims were actually battling one another. The bloodlines are battling one another. There's a bloodline battle right now. That's why there's going to be 10 kings. They're going to rise up. Why there'll be 10 confederacies all associated with with the serpent's bloodline battling for power. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. That's happening all over the world, isn't it? Times and laws, they're trying to implement Sharia law everywhere. I mean, if you think about it, they're using the Islamic Muslim military to do their bidding. And what is their desire? Well, they want to turn everyone into a... They want to rule the world under the Muslim rule. Amen? And destroy every Israeli Jew and Israel. That's their goal. And every Christian. Can't touch this, though. Then the saints shall be given into... His hands for a time and times and a half time. That's three and a half years. But the court shall be seated and they, will, they shall take away his dominion. This will be the conclusion. To consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. In other words, eventually we get it. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. In Daniel uh, chapter 8 and verse 23. Daniel 8, 23. 8, 23. In a latter time, are we in the latter time? of their kingdom when the transgressors have reached their fullness. That's why you're seeing a lot of evil manifesting, aren't, aren't you? They're coming out of everywhere. Sin is increasing and it's increasing and it's increasing. Uh, righteousness, things that would produce righteousness are being removed. Things that are uh, moral standards are being removed. Prayer has been removed from the schools and, you know, you, if you speak anything about Jesus, they're, they're going to want to persecute you. But you can speak anything. You, man, you can go out and pull out tarot cards. You can place a curse on someone. You can speak about Muhammad, Allah, and every other one of those demons. Uh, but you speak about Jesus and you get persecuted. Because that's where we're at right now. Right, uh, righteousness of Christ is being manifested through his body. 
through our obedience, but the wickedness is increasing and increasing. And some individuals that are not right with God, because of the uh, wickedness of the world that is increasing, is drawing them right back in. Even believers are being, it says, many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving, seducing, and seductive spirits. Because what Satan's major, major weapon, we know is deception, but what is that major weapon that he uses in deception? Lust. It's lust. That's what started in the garden. Lust. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy, and it's over. They run, unless it's ordained by the Lord, then they serve. It's different. Is everybody okay? Yes, Hallelujah. In the latter time, and, uh, okay, when transgressors have reached their fullness, and of course, even in the transgressors, you know, we see homosexuality and, you know, and so forth, and pornography, you know, all of the garbage, lust. A king shall arise having fierce features who understand sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. He shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. In other words, he's going to get destroyed, not according to human merit, not, not through a gun or something. And the vision of the evenings and the mornings which was told is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. Now go to... 9 verse 27. And it says that he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, which is seven years. 9.27. He shall make a covenant, a peace covenant, for seven year peace covenant. But in the middle of the week, in the middle of the seven years, he shall break an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even into the consummation which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. desolate. In other words, he's going to break this covenant. Something's going to occur. War has to break out. Something's got to occur where somebody's going to step in and bring peace. There'll be an individual that will bring peace. This will be the Antichrist who is here now and preparing. And in the middle of the seven year tribulation, something will happen to him. He will die. And that will be the body prepared for Satan because he will rise again from the dead. That is the body prepared for Satan. And Satan himself will enter their body. And when he comes in, so will the rest of the, all the angels and so forth will be put in the natural realm. And you will see many weird things. Hopefully we won't. We won't. We'll be gone. I hope. Other than that, praise God. <laughs> now, we know that the tetrad of the four, moon, four blood moons, the first blood moon starts April 15th, which is a Tuesday night. So praise God, we'll be celebrating the Feast of Passover. So we know that's coming up. So we don't really, every time the tetrad comes, something's going on with Israel. Amen? Amen. And, and according to NASA, NASA, there's no more tetrids. This is the last. Four blood moons. They've not calculated any others. 
and go to Luke 21. Now, this is the first time ever Israel has shut down all of their embassies. I mean, think about this. This, this is something, you know. This is, this is not, you know, spring break for Israel's embassies. <laughs> They're not going to the beach. <laughs> They're going to the desert. Verse 20. Would you read it with me, please? But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. Let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon the, this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. And I'm going to close in Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. And the word tells us that before a body can fall to the ground, that the flesh will be burned, melted away, and the eye sockets will disappear before it can even fall to the ground. It sounds like nuclear, doesn't it? There'll be a lot of things happening. The word also tells us that a third of mankind will be killed. A third of mankind. We gotta be right with God. <laughs> I mean, we're in this season that something can happen at any moment. It's not like, uh, well, five years, ten years. No. We were, I was with some people today, and they were talking about ten and twenty years, and I thought they didn't understand, so I wasn't even going to go there. I was like, man, nobody's going to be here in 20 years. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we may be back. <laughs> I'll be back, you know. But other than that, uh, uh, everything is in preparation. Everything is f being fulfilled right before our eyes. We are the generation. And we've got to stop having doubts about it. We've got to stop playing games about it. We've got to come out of the arena and, and come out of the lust of the world and the desire that says, uh, uh, stop loving the world. Quit trying to build your life and let him build it. He's got to build your life. When you start building it, when we start building we just mess it up. Then when we want, then let me tell you something. Your desires will speak louder than God's voice. In fact, when you're asking something and it's not God, he won't even answer you. Sometimes. He won't answer you. You know what he's saying? You know better than that. You know better. Than, you, have you not searched your heart out? You know better than that. And Revelation 20, verse 7. Would you read it with me? Now when a thousand years has expired, Satan will be what? Released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as of the sand of the sea. 
In other words, these will be the remnants because God will be released. They went up on the breath. Look at They went up on the breath of the earth. Hello. So where were they? They were in the earth in captivity, weren't they? And they, were, they went up on the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now everybody's name is written in the book of life when you come into the world. It's when you give your last breath whether it stays or not. Then it's blotted out or it stays. That's why children go home. Amen? Because their name's written in the book. So just know that we are on the cutting edge of things. This was a training session to keep us aware of where we're at, what's going on. The time clock of the world and all the events is associated with Israel. It is the time clock. That's why the Bible says, pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for them. Amen? Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace. And we ask the seed... Be protected by the blood of the Lamb and grow and bear fruit for your glory. And may you bless each and every one here and all of our watchers and all those who've listened today to your message. And to Jesus be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And we said amen. amen.